for the lack of these outward advantages. So they saw in him a power that was far greater than grandeur, than pomp, than all these things. They saw this power with Jesus. But, take note of but, but the purity and holiness of Christ. What? <laughs> But the purity and the holiness of Christ call forth against him the hatred of the ungodly. So let's pause there. What two things, according to inspiration, that called the... Now, keep, keep, keep that in mind. So I'm saying what brought persecution for Jesus, inspiration is saying, is purity plus his holiness. But now, purity and holiness were only fruits they were only fruits of something which was the root. Tell me, what does she go on to say? Purity and holiness were only fruits of something which was at the root. Take note, he is a life of self-denial and sinless devotion was a perpetual reproof to the proud sensual people. It was this that invoked enmity against the Son of God. What invoked enmity against the Son of God? Self-denial and sinless devotion. So I'm saying if there's going to be purity and holiness in my life, the root of that is what? Self-denial and sinless devotion. These were the two, this is the thing inspiration is saying that caused the wrath, persecution of Satan upon the Son of God. It was because of his purity and holiness, but which were fruits of a life of self-denial and sinless devotion. Now someone might say, how do I get self, uh, like self-denial and sinless devotion? Because the end result is purity and holiness. Remember what Matthew 5 verse 8, uh, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart for what? They shall see God. The 144,000 and see the Father face to face. Hebrews chapter 12 says, without holiness, no man shall see the Father. So I'm saying if ever we're going to look at God face to face, these are the two things we need as purity and holiness. The 144,000 need us the most because they're going to live in the sight of a holy God without a mediator. They're going to be, get off this planet alive without tasting death. But what is the key for purity and holiness? A life of self-denial and sinless devotion. Self-denial and sinless devotion. My question is this now. I, I see what brought persecution on Jesus as a life of self-denial and sinless devotion. But how did Jesus get to this that brought forth holiness and purity? How? Because I'm saying if I'm going to make it to the crisis and be persecuted, I need a life, I need to live a life of self-denial and sinless devotion. This is going to get me to be persecuted and get the seal and make it to the crisis. How did Jesus develop such? Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That is true. But <laughs> I want you to see publicly what caused Jesus to live a life of self-denial and sinless devotion. Come in your Bible to John. John chapter 5. John, the fifth chapter. John chapter 5. I want us to see John, the fifth chapter, verse 30. John chapter 5, verse 30. Are you there? Take note what Jesus says. He says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Take note. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which had sent me. What did Jesus say when he came on this earth? He submitted his will to the Father. Jesus had no will of his own. He gave his will over to the Father. I want you to see this in John 6. Like Jesus repeats this so that we can, it can be drummed into our minds that he had no will of his own. John chapter 6. John 6. I want us to see John the 6th chapter, verse 38. John 6, verse 38. 
He says, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. What is Jesus saying? He, whose will was he accomplishing? His father's will. So he says he came not down to this earth to do his own will, but the will of him that sent him. So I'm asking friends, if I'm going to live a life of self-denial and sinless devotion, what did Jesus do with his will? I can rightfully say then that Jesus submitted. He submitted his will to the Father. Can I rightfully say that Jesus, if he submitted his will to the Father, can I ask you this then, that Jesus have a will of his own? He had no will of his own. Now who as a type of the 144,000 that was translated off this earth without tasting death. Who, who, who was a, a, a type, a symbol of the 144,000? Who? Enoch. Do you know that Enoch walked with God? We are told in the Bible that Enoch walked with God and it says he was not for God took him. How did Enoch walk with God? Was it through a trance, through a vision? How did he walk with God? In Steps to Christ, this wonderful book, we are told how he walked with God. She says, pray in your closet. And as you go about your daily labors, as you go about your daily labors, let your heart be often lifted up to God through prayer. These silent prayers ascend before his throne as precious incense. It is thus that Enoch walked with God. How did Enoch walk with God? Constantly praying. Constantly praying, Enoch walked with God. Do you know what Enoch prayed? Does anybody know what Enoch prayed? Because in, in this book, she just says Enoch prayed. That as he went through his daily labors, as he was busy, whether it's in the garden, wherever he was, Enoch was constantly uplifting his heart to God. Constantly. But what was Enoch praying? I want you to see what Enoch prayed in his prayers. What did Enoch say to God while he was going through his daily labors? You know what she says? You know what she says? Lost the events, page 71. She says he refused, that's Enoch. He refused to take any course that would offend his God. Interesting. Enoch refused to take any course that would offend his God. He kept the Lord continually before him. How did he do that? How did he keep the Lord continually before him? He would pray. Teach me thy way, that I might not err. What is thy pleasure concerning me? What shall I do to honor thee, my God? What did he pray? Teach me thy way. What did he say? That I might not err. What is thy pleasure concerning me? What shall I do to honor thee, my God? He was constantly asking God, show me your way. Teach me your way, that I don't err, Lord. He constantly pleaded with God, How, what shall I do to honor you? He was every time, Lord, will this honor you? Will this please you? Lord, teach me, is this the right thing I'm doing? Constantly, Enoch lifted up his heart, asking God to teach him his way. She continues, Thus he, thus he was constantly shaping his way and his course in accordance with God's commandments. And he had perfect confidence and trust in his heavenly Father that he would help him. Here are the next part. He had no thoughts, interesting, or world of his own. It was all submerged in the will of his father. Are you hearing what she says? He had no thought. He had no will of his own. It was all submerged in the will of his father. Are you hearing what inspiration is saying, friends? Enoch had no thought. He had no will of his own. Just as Jesus had no will of his own. It was submerged. What is the, now, friends, let me ask you this. What is the will? The power of choice or of decision. That steps to Christ, page 47. So the will is the power of choice of decision. So what you're saying that Enoch made no choices for himself. Jesus made no choices for himself. He allowed God to choose for him on every point. Now, if you want to know what's God's choice for you, where should you go? Bible. If you want to know what God wants you to eat, his choice for your diet, Bible. If you want to know what God wants you to drink, what you should drink, Bible. Like God's will is revealed through the Holy Scriptures and through the Spirit of prophecy. If I'm going to have no will of my own, I'm saying the only way for me to make it to this crisis, my will must be given up to God. 
Do you know that those who keep the 